Hey there everyone, Vaish here, back again with another video and now that we all are on same page and we understand the importance that Linux is very essential for every single programmer, no matter what domain you are working on, from this video onwards, we're going to take a series on Linux. We're going to understand a whole lot of things about Linux. And my recommendation for that is have patience, my dear friend. A lot is coming up in this series. This video is moreover a theoretical knowledge, a must-have topic discussion which we all should have about Linux. I am a kind of a person who usually likes to install the stuff and just directly go from there. But in this case, we have a lot of confusion regarding Linux, so it's an essential talk. So let's get started here. And I am talking about Linux from a Windows laptops. A little bit ironic, but that is essential for this series. So first and foremost, let's get started with the Linux. And when I say Linux, Linux basically is a kernel. What does that mean? Kernel simply is kind of a thing which interacts with your hardware. So it is not what you think. Linux is basically a kernel. When you put more stuff on that kernel, like more softwares which you actually love, then it becomes a whole operating system. I don't like to go into the debate of is it a kernel, is it an OS and all these things. Just keep in mind, it's basically a core kernel concept. And what the Linux you actually believe or see is a little bit different from that. But still, we're going to use this word very interchangeably here. So whenever I say Linux, I don't consider it as kernel, consider it as a whole operating system. So now let's move forward onto Linux. But before we go ahead and discuss anything about Linux, it's essential that we understand some of the personalities here. And the first personality is very famous. I am pretty sure most of you are aware of that. Linus Torvalds, and uh, he is the man behind the Linux. But not just the Linux is going to be the core foundation of this entire series. We need to understand about one more person. Uh, some of you might not be aware of this person. He is Richard Stallman. And just on the side note, in 2008 or 2009, uh, he came to India for a conference, amazing conference, and he regularly comes to India for conferences as well in the Bangalore. So in case you just find him somewhere, uh, make sure to say him hello in any conference or anything like that. So let's go ahead and move forward from this now that we have uh, done our hello part to these amazing great people because of that. Now on to a side note again, Richard Stallman is the person uh, through which we are getting all these softwares. Uh, his approach of creating these open source software, uh, this entire approach actually comes from the Richard Stallman. So he's an equally important personality when we talk about Linux. Let's move forward. So I I know, I totally understand that you don't like history. And whenever I say history, uh, you say that, yeah, it's a very, very boring kind of a thing. But in this case, we need to understand a little bit basic history about the Linux. No, we don't need to memorize the year in which Linux came out. Although if you know, that's great. But we're going to understand a different part of history, which is very, very interesting in terms of Linux. So let's get started here. First and foremost, Linux was highly inspired by Minix, which was inspired by Unix. Uh, it's not a really additional information that you need to worry about. The whole thing, the whole idea is that what we're going to learn are the core foundation of Unix in this series. That means regardless of what operating system you are going to be working on, most of the stuff is going to be actually same because they are all derived from the Unix and Minix based system. Also, we need to understand the licensing part of that. The reason why most of the people, including me, say that Linux is totally open source, you can edit it, all softwares are free. The free thing actually comes from a very special type of licensing system, which also you need to study a little bit, which is GNU General Public License. This license simply says that you can just take any software and the redistribution of the software along with the modification of software is totally free and you can do so. And that's why these Linux and everything is totally free. And that is basically the reason of the wide adoption of the Linux. And although you don't realize it much, but Linux is almost everywhere, whether you realize it or not. All the websites, like most of them are actually running on the Linux server. Your routers and the small scale thing even your Android devices, these all are running some or the other version of the Linux. Yes, I said it right, including your routers as well. So this GNU, uh, not GNU, the GNU public uh, license is actually responsible for making everything almost free. Although the licensing thing is a very complicated stuff. Uh, so maybe some another day we'll talk about the licensing of these softwares. But right now, GNU general public license simply means modification and redistribution of the software is totally allowed. Let's move forward about some of the Linux stuff. Now, when I talk about Linux, 
uh, actually I'm saying about the kernel is mostly the same so and uh, again the question rises here is if the Linux is totally same for all of them why is that I'm using Ubuntu and somebody else is using uh, Fedora or anything else so the whole idea the whole concept is that the GNU part is actually different. Some of the companies, these companies govern the GNU part and they took the Linux kernel and they, they are just putting up some of the modified version of their software onto that. And these companies actually govern all these things. So that is why when you are looking up about some problem that you are facing on an Ubuntu and when you found a solution on a Fedora, it doesn't work on your software because the GNU part the company which is holding all these licensing uh, and the redistribution of the software is actually completely different. But we're going to take care of that, that how this difference is and how we can understand all these parts. Right now, all you need to understand is that yes, the Linux inside in itself, a kernel is the same one, but what you put on top of that, what package manage manager you use, whether that's apt-get package manager or yum package manager, this is a whole lot of a different story. These are completely different one. So on top of that, yes, it's all same, but yet different, but still the same. So I couldn't find a better GIF for that, but yeah, that's it. Okay, moving on forward. Uh, another terminology that you need to understand is the distro. When we talk about the Linux, I've seen this quite a lot that even in the comment section of this YouTube channel, people said, hey, make a video series on Debian because there are so many videos on Ubuntu again. And this was not only one, a lot of them. Now we need to understand this concept of distros. So what is this distro? Distro is simply a specific group of software. Some companies came out forward and they said, we are taking up this Linux and we are taking entire thing in our hands. So all the things like updation of the software, package repository, and the release of the new security patches, we'll be dealing with that. And these companies actually launched their own distributions of Linux or shortly known as distros. So what are the famous companies that are using these distros and are launching these distros? So the most common one are Arch, or also known as Arc. The second one is Debian, very popular one. Another one is Red Hat, and another one is Slackware. Now, by no means I want to say these are only the one, that's why the word other is there. There are so many other companies, small and big, which are also maintaining some of their distribution groups, also known as distros. And uh, mostly you're gonna be seeing the distros made by Debian or the Red Hat group. Just to give you a quick example on top of that, whenever you say that I'm using a Linux Mint, Ubuntu, Kali, Parrot, Dipin, elementary OS, these are all governed by one group of distro group of uh, people known as Debian. So ultimately you're using the Debian operating system. Uh, it's just a flavor and their packaging and their look and feel is a little bit different. But inside the heart, what's running is the Debian. On the other case, if you're using something known as CentOS or Fedora, then you are mostly high chances are that you are using Red Hat group of distribution. So this is the whole story. Now coming on to a one side part again, that chances are high that if you are giving any Red Hat kind of a certification exam, because the Red Hat Enterprise Linux or Real is actually paid and there are some licensing issues as well. Not if like totally paid, but yes, there are some licensing issues. So in that case is all the people who try to just prepare for such exam, they use CentOS. CentOS is like the entire Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux and stripping off all the things like their branding and everything. That's basically your CentOS. Okay, so this is the basic introduction. And now that you know about the distros and how things are same yet different. Now, another thing I would like to mention here because a lot of people are not aware of it. A lot of people believe that uh, Red Linux means everything is free. So how these companies are making money. No, not everything on a Linux is free. When we talk about the server editions or something that is maintaining your servers, sometimes companies do charge money for them. And for that money, they provide support, security, some exams, some prof uh, really uh, professional qualified trainers, uh, some people who can actually work on that, system admins, and all of that. So it looks really good that everything is free in the Linux world, but if you have to hire some engineers and all these things to maintain your servers, that definitely is not free. That definitely cost a lot of money. So again, uh, Linux is mostly free to modify and redistribute, but sometimes things do cost money as well. Red Hat is one good example of that. 
Okay, let's move forward. So the whole idea is that this entire series is gonna be focused around Bash cell, shell. Now in the Linux, uh, there are a huge variety of shells that are available. By the term shell, I simply means the black box, the terminal, the command prompt that you are seeing, that you usually see on the Linux. Uh, that is, uh, when you write some command on that, what's gonna come up from that command is heavily dependent on what shell you are using. And there is no shortage of these shells in the Linux. So we're gonna be talking about one specific such shell in this entire series, which is gonna be bash shell. So yes, uh, this is a really long video where we are talking about a lot of stuff. Now I want to give you something really amazing and interesting. And in the next video, we're gonna talk about more such stuff. One such great website, I know that a lot of people want to try variety of flavors of Linux like Mint, Elementary OS, Kali Linux, Backtrack, does Backtrack still exist? Anyways, so they they try to install these operating system on their system. Now, you don't need to do that. You can actually go onto this website, which is distrotest.net. And uh, you can just try your hands onto any operating system by launching an instance of that. Now, sometimes this website uh, actually runs onto a heavy load. So you might be into some queue. Again, this is a free service. So sometimes we have to be in the queue. But all they do is you just click on that and inside your browser, you will be provided a simple operating system so you can get a feel and look whether you like that or not. Of course, this is gonna be a little bit laggy because uh, again, it's it's just a browser VNC that we are using up here, but they have a huge number of operating system they give you as like for testing or just to have a feel and look, including the Kali and Parrot and all these amazing operating system. So I highly recommend to check out this website, one amazing resource, uh, distrotest.net. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. In case you have enjoyed it, please let me know in the comment section of the YouTube. I look forward for all of your comment and your comment is gonna be the only reason why I, why I will make the next video. Otherwise, I'll make some other kind of videos. So that's it for this one. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that like button also. And let me know in the comment section uh, what you would like to see in the next video. That's it for this one and let's catch up in the next one.